I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my mother because I think that she's the reason that I'm, I'm standing here with you all today. When I was a child growing up in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, <laughs> at the beginning of what would be a long history of troubled sleep, my mom would sing to me as we listened to gunshots and arguments ricocheting outside of our door. She would say, lay down body, lay down little while. Trouble soon be over, lay down a little while. Just keep on rolling, lay down a little while. Trouble soon be over, lay down a little while. See, what she knew then, what I would learn later, is that song can not only put a child troubled by violence to sleep, it can raise that child to dream. Or it can raise a nation of dissidents to voice, to action, to power. My mother learned this lesson as the grandniece of musicians like Carmen McRae, as the cousin of writers like Michelle Wallace, as the niece of artists like Vivian Schuyler Key. She raised this lesson to core belief first as a member of SNCC, teaching literacy on the protest line, and then as a leader in the Black Panther Party, running their New York breakfast programs, editing their national newspaper, launching liberation schools throughout New York City, and organizing to oppose media bias against queer youth that looked just like me. In the musical and artistic tapestry of our family, against the bone-crushing opposition to the civil rights and black power movements, and in the context of murderous youth criminalization and anti-gay homophobia that threatened her child's life. The core beliefs of my mother's young adulthood bloomed into the organizing principle that would then organize my life, the idea that political change depends upon cultural change. And she lived that principle, even as she was forced to explain to me the terms faggot, super predator, crack baby, welfare mother, as I grew up in the 80s and 90s, just as her mother had once explained that N-word to her. Even in the cover of night, singing to her eldest child, even as she sickened into end-stage sickle cell in 2002, even unto her death in 2005, my mother lived that principle, and she demanded that I live it too. It was toward the end of her life that I had the opportunity to found the Center for Media Justice. And it was then that I had the honor of joining a small group of committed media activists at the Highlander Center in Tennessee, where the term media justice came to describe the vision for a transformed media system, one that agitated, one that reflected new relations of power, new conditions, new consciousness, and new culture because we believe that the future in this country depends upon transforming the official stories and the rules and platforms that orchestrate the telling. My mother's song said, lay down, body. Lay down, little while. And I had no idea then that it was in the thousands of allied arms in which I would find rest, the kind of rest that came from realizing that neither the work nor the wind depended solely upon me. If I could accept this award and then give it back to you, I would, because the victory is yours. It's ours. The victory belongs to the social merger that prevented AT&T's economic merger, which would have devastated the pocketbooks of the poor and fattened the wallets of the wealthy. The victory belongs to Prometheus Radio Project, who organized to make Community Radio Act more than a pipe dream. They called it, they made it a Pied Piper, calling communities to their licensing rights and turning radio into the tool for change it promised to be. The victory belongs to the incarcerated families and the criminal justice organizers who partnered with the leaders of the Campaign for Prison Phone Justice, our civil rights, faith, and public interest allies who amplified the strategy. Together, we took on the prison phone industry and their predatory practices, and we won. We won big. The victory belongs to the Urbana Champaign Independent Media Center, the Media Mobilizing Project, the Media Literacy Project, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, and all the local leaders all over this country who are standing up to say, enough is enough. We will have a truly democratic media and nothing less. 
and the victory belongs to you, the United Church of Christ. For through each fight, you have remained a strong ally, a powerful leader, and a dedicated servant to underrepresented communities. I'm humbled and I'm honored to receive an award named for the impressive work of Donald McGannon. McGannon called for standards and social responsibility in broadcasting. And all over this country, social movement leaders stand on his shoulders as they transform political partnerships and political relationships by connecting the mechanisms of culture to the mechanisms of power, because power is what this is all about. All over this country, we are winning. We are winning through faith. We are winning through that big agape love. We are winning through collaboration. We are winning through grassroots leadership, and we are winning through cultural change, and we're going to keep on winning. Because my mama said, lay down a little while. She said, just keep on rolling. She said, trouble soon be over. And with or without their bodies, our mother's songs remain. With or without rights and access, our dissident voices will still rise. In the words of one magnet leader, there are no voiceless people. Only people ain't been heard yet, but I guarantee you we will be. Thank you.